This is an overview of the new experience builder. If you're interested in getting started and building out your first experience, this is a good place to start. We're first going to build one from scratch and then take a look at one of the available templates. We've started out here in the experience builder launch pad and here I can get an overview of the last few experiences that I have built. From here, I could totally just continue editing one of these experiences by clicking the tile. I could preview the experience to see what it would look like as a published item and then head to the item details page. But I'd like to start a new experience. Now, Experience Builder is a unified build system and it, it enables you to deliver modern 2D and 3D web experiences. As I mentioned, we've got a few web templates available, but I want to start entirely from scratch using the blank full screen app. So the first thing you'll notice when you come into the interface is that we've got a blank canvas. In the header section here, there's a few things that you can do. I'm going to start by giving my app a title. And then from here, I'll be able to um, remove and repeat my last actions. This is where I save my experience, preview what I've already created, publish it, create a new one, and then uh, change the active logged in user if that's necessary. Then the builder is set up with content management on the left hand side. And this is where you can keep track of the pages you've created. So a layout may contain a single or multiple pages. As we start out, we've only got a single page and every single one of these pages are made up of three components. You've got the header, body, and footer. So as you begin to build your application, um, this is where your different widgets will appear. I wanna take a closer look at this data tab and data is defined using data sources and widgets can access data from private and public content in ArcGIS Online. The Experience Builder allows you to connect seamlessly to, let's see, web maps. You can connect to web scenes, feature layers, uh, or URLs like your ArcGIS Enterprise services. And this is all done within the exact same experience. So I know I'll be working with web maps and scenes. I created of different locations along what's called the Viking Trail in Western Newfoundland. And this is a stretch of about 500 kilometers and they lead uh, you to two different UNESCO World Heritage Sites. So I'll go ahead and select these different maps. And by doing so, I'm adding them to my um, experience. And then I've also got these two web scenes. So throughout the process of building my application, I can always refer back to this tab and it also lets me know what widgets are referring to these specific web maps or scenes. So we'll keep going. Another thing I wanted to point out was just that the right hand side uh, of the builder is dedicated to settings and stylings. And one thing that's fantastic about the Experience Builder is you have full control over the look and feel. You have a lot of customizing options. So let's start by adding to the body of our page. I'll go ahead and select a column. And this is basically a container that's used to add other widgets into it. The next thing I want to do is add a list widget into this column. And since I want it to occupy 100% of this column, I'll just adjust the layout to make sure that it fits to container. I'll select a template and get started. We'll add a data source. And for this first list, I'm going to select a map I created of all the locations visited in the Lance O Meadows historical site. And since I selected those uh, maps uh, at the very beginning, it detected that uh, there were feature layers present. So I'll go ahead and select the correct feature layer. And then I've got a few more than three items um, in this map. I'll bump that up to 15. That's a bit more appropriate. We can start to build out our image widget that is part of our list. 
to accommodate dynamic data sources. So image and text widgets can bind directly to a feature layer. In my case, I'm going to go ahead and grab the URL graphic that's stored um, within a field. And that way I'm populating that widget with my results. And then I'll go ahead and get rid of the default text and instead select a dynamic attribute. Let's keep adding, let's add a map widget, adjust it and set the data to that same uh, web map. Now if I switch to live view here, I'm able to get a sense of what the app or how the app will behave uh, once it's live. But I'd like to do is that when I select an item in the list, it pans to and the extent changes within the map, which is not happening right now, which means I have to add a trigger. So within the styling pane, uh, there's this action tab where I can add a trigger. But what I have to do first right now, um, I have to get out of live view. I'm going to make sure that the list widget is selected. And then from here, I can add that trigger. So when a feature selection, selection changes, making sure that I zoom to that item in the map. This is a good time to save and we'll see what this looks like in action. So that's what I was looking to do. So far I've built a simple application by dragging and dropping that list widget as well as the map widget and both of these widgets have the same data source, a map of the Lanzo Meadows historical site, which permits interactivity by using the trigger I set. Um, in this case, the, there is an action um, when a feature selection changes. So to keep building this up, one thing that might be useful is a header. And as a first step, I'm going to add a link and I'll just quickly breeze through uh, this part here. Then toggling on and off a header or footer is done pretty quickly. I'll turn this on and then adjust the size. And with the Experience Builder, you can always customize the look and feel of your application so that it matches uh, your company logo. And we'll go ahead and edit the header. And as you see, the rest of the application is sort of grayed out, letting you know that the header has been activated. Since I want to add a title, I'll go ahead and add a text widget. And this is the title that I wanted to give my application. By highlighting it, I can do a bit of um, text formatting and you have access to all those classic text formatting options, which I will use right now. And by selecting the edit option, I can edit the size of that widget. Now I added those links earlier and the way that I can access those, I'm going to drag and drop a menu widget. And as you can see, those menu item appear here. There's some very simple styling options, the background, I'd like it to be blank and then as a highlighting option, the selected option will, will show up as white. We'll go ahead and save that. There's one last thing that I wanted to point out. If I head back to that data tab, I mentioned earlier that you can always refer back to the data that you've connected to within your experience. And as you see, the one map that I have used so far is the Lanso Meadows um, site and that's the web map. And it lets me know that one widget is being uh, is using that map. If I select, um, I get a bit more details in use. That feature layer is connected to four different widgets. And if I were to remove that widget, I would be warned by um, 
what widgets would be affected upon that deletion. So this is just another way that you're able to monitor the, the data that you're using within your experience. So I hope you enjoyed this quick overview of Experience Builder. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like the video and feel free to leave any comments or suggestions below. If you'd like to see more Ezri Canada videos, please subscribe to our channel.